planning board meeting at this time. 601. At 6.01 p.m. May the 19th. And we're going to go through the agenda to call it to order. And the first thing we're going to do by our agenda, does everyone have a copy of our agenda, please? If you don't, would you raise your hand? Uh, there's a raise. This guy, Phil, back here, does not have a copy of the agenda. Any correspondence that we want to bring up, do you give all the correspondence to us that we need to address? Yes, I'll list it out for you. So the, the only thing you didn't get a copy of was Andy Yale completed the missed meeting affidavit for the portion of the meeting that he missed in April. Yes. So he has reviewed the documentation, he's watched the video and or read or listened to the audio recording. So he is also to participate, he's up to speed. Participate in all the agenda uh, items at this time. Correct. Okay. And then next, um, I didn't print it out, but there's a letter from uh, Joe Kramer regarding Mr. Moreau's application that I think came in on May 6th. Mr. Um, again, I don't think I printed that one out. And then there's a letter. I can, I can go print it out in two seconds. Um, there's a letter from David Lorry dated March 14th regarding Mr. Moreau's application. I'm pretty sure I sent that out CC to everybody. And then there's a letter from May 18th from Mr. Silk regarding Mr. Moreau's application. So I will go, I'll go print Ms. Kramer's. Okay. Or I'll see if I can get it right here. So we do need to get those from you. Sure I, I think so. Hopefully, press my finger. <laughs> there was only one other one that I have. Yeah, I've got one. Okay. Yes, that's it. That's one. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm curious about that one, too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we have the correspondence from the uh, law office of David and David Ray, uh, who's the town attorney. We also have one from, uh, I have that one too. <laughs> uh, David P. Still, who is uh, a representative of uh, one of the abutters, Michael Nelson, Nelson. And we have one other one for Tuesday, April 26, 2021, a uh, meeting of minutes. Or the, I don't know if you guys have got that yet, but she passed that out. The view of minutes of April the 21st, 2021 in May the 5th, 2021 workshop. Okay, now if you review the minutes of April the 21st, please review those quickly, board members, and see if you want to accept them as written or the changes that need to be made before we make them a permanent record. Any changes to the 21st town um, uh, planning board minutes that she's given to us?
old business. Now we're down to old business. Site plan review right through Monroe, or, uh, 26 Green Lane, map R19, lot 44, automotive repair shop. Board, does anyone have any point of view on this at this time that you would like to bring up or discuss? Yes, Andy. The response is consistent request for the law. Just to note again, it's a term of that I refuse myself. Okay. I state that um, in terms of this application, the one time I voted for it, I voted against it. Uh, on this board, the bias is always covered by the I had to vote against things I thought were good ideas, and four things I thought were terrible ideas. I think uh, Mr. Silk and Mr. Duncan should um, cease and desist. So in fact, to impugn my integrity, I will not approve myself and I will vote on this in accordance with the ordinance of the county. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. I don't know. I can't remember the plan. What I'm saying is that 
that the, uh, the DEP is taking to the 300 foot mark and, and all the maps that we have still keep, it, keep the water without in that area. And I think we should be looking at the first. Mr. Monroe, I thank your lawyer has her hand up. Would you come forward and introduce yourself to her? Uh, sounds like she wants to speak. Yeah. Hey, I'm Roger Morrow. This is my lawyer, Joe Kramer. Uh, your recipient address, please? 26 Reed Lane in Parsonsfield, sir. Appreciate that. No problem. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Jill Kramer. I represent the applicant, Roger Moreau. All right, the, um, so I just wanted to clarify a couple of issues here. Uh, we stipulate that the, uh, the, the, the current site of the current garage is located, per the DEP regulations, too close to his neighbor's private drinking well. The plan that you were just handed by your uh, assistant secretary uh, has, if, you, if I could draw your attention to it, a proposed garage siding. You will see on here, I'm looking at the little one, you guys can get your big one. There, so, I don't know, well somewhere over here, there's a um, sort of uh, oblique line here. That is the 300 foot mark. Beside it, past the 300 foot mark, some, I don't know, several dozen feet here, uh, we've got a proposed site for the garage. So Mr. Moreau uh, recognizes that he needs to move his garage in order to make this project work. Uh, and he's got a proposed site here. He's either going to move it or build a new one. And that's going to be in front of you. If you guys need more information about that, uh, it does have uh, sizes on here, your proposed size. It's unfortunate that you did not receive my letter dated May 6th until today. You didn't have a chance to review it. Um, so if I might, I just might hit a couple of points. I did, I did email it out. Okay. That was just a hard copy. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. That's comforting. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. As soon as you said that I forwarded it. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. I was a little bit stressed about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we recognize in here that the, uh, that the proposed, uh, the previous site was too close to the water well. He's going to move the garage. Um, we've revised the private way plan to indicate that. We've addressed the, the three issues that you brought up at the last planning board meeting as far as uh, a clearer picture of the gravel, uh, where the entryway is to this garage. We've still got the parking areas there. Mr. Moreau has priced out a secondary uh, storage tank for the storage of oil and petroleum products. Uh, products. He's prepared to um, put that forward um, should this project be approved. I'm sure the planning board is aware that you are, you, I mean, your job here is to take a look at the project, review it, is it consistent with the ordinance, and then you can place conditions on granting of a permit. You guys know you can do that. Yes. We are fully open to having those conditions placed on there, whatever the conditions might be. Of course, they have to be kind of reasonable in relation to what the we're goal is. Uh, right, exactly. It seems like you kind of studied up in, in anticipation of this meeting tonight, and for that I'm grateful. Um, we don't have any objection to the continued participation of Andy Yale on this. Uh, we do, I do want to affirmatively ask for a waiver of Article 3, Section 5, Subsection B1. That is the requirement uh, that the applicant provide a full boundary survey. You've got enough information that you need on the, on the plans, the several plans that have been provided. There's one with all the water courses on it. There's one where we've got the proposed site. You've got all the setbacks on there, and I don't, it's, it's cost prohibitive to ask Mr. Moreau to get a full boundary survey of his 12 acres so he can put a garage 20 feet from where it currently exists. Which article one what? It is Article 3, Subsection 5, B1. I've got it on page 97 of the current code. Page 96. Page 96. Oh, right. Page, page 96. And the playing board on page 97 is allowed to waive things. Um, you can modify or waive any of the submission requirements if you determine that the size of the project or circumstances of the site would not be applicable or would be an unnecessary burden on the applicant. Our argument is that it's both. It's the back of the, the lot isn't applicable here. Neither are the sideline. I mean, it's 12 acres. You know, we've got, you've got the boundaries that are important to this project. You've got all of the setbacks on there in order to determine if this meets the bulk space requirements. Um, and it also, you know, a full survey is going to cost him like eight grand. Uh, this guy's already out like tens of thousands of dollars trying to get this project through. Uh, and, and he is determined. Um, but asking him to shell out another ten grand for a full survey is just an unnecessary and unreasonable financial burden for him. One of the things I wanted to address, I know you guys got the letter from the town attorney. I got that, I got that letter too. 
one of the concerns that was brought up I kind of want to address head on. He's asked you guys to consider whether or not you can allow two uses, uh, two principal, what would be two primary uses on this lot. Uh, right now there's a, a single family residence. We're proposing a new use an automotive repair garage. And I want to make this really clear. We've had some allegations that this is going to be a junkyard, an automobile graveyard, an auto body shop. It's none of those things. This is an automotive repair shop. He's going to be fixing cars for cash, and that is it. Okay, so the misrepresentations that have come through this board, uh, I don't know, I, I strenuously object to them because his project is a garage. It's, a, it's an automotive repair garage. It's allowed in uh, the village residential zone where he lives if we get through this process. Um, as far as the two uses are concerned, uh, Attorney Lori brought up, and Attorney Silk has kind of clung on to here, that you can't have it. I have identified at least four separate sections of the ordinance that reference multiple primary uses, multiple principal uses. And I'm going to point you to those if you got your code in front of you. Um, the first one is... The off-street parking and loading section. I've got the page numbers here, too, I think. Page 24. <clears throat> the ordinance provides, and this is in a completely unrelated a section of what we're talking about, but I just want to identify the town has specifically contemplated multiple primary or principal uses on a, on a single parcel. Uh, section E says the joint use of a parking facility by two or more principal buildings or uses may be approved by the planning board where it's clearly demonstrated that the parking facilities will substantially meet the intent of the requirements. So we've got... Which one? Which section is that in? It's in... Um, I'm on page 24. I've got... It's section L, off-street parking, subsection 2E. <coughs> This what? is directly referring to parking facilities, so it's defined in that subsection E, here. it says parking facilities, it says it over and over again. Right. I'm just, I'm just pointing out a couple of sections in the ordinance that specifically refer to more than one principal use. So to the extent the board was going to have an internal conversation or a conversation with the town attorney, can he have two uses? Can he have an automotive repair garage? And can he have a single use? We've got this section of the ordinance that says, at least in this case, if there are two or more principal buildings or uses, right? Principal building or use. It could be a single family. It could be a commercial. I'd like to point out that the business across the street is a, is a residence along with a construction shop, and I'm pretty sure I passed a, at least one junkyard on my way here. Sure. Section number two that I wanted to draw your attention to is actually in the, um, right before the bulk space requirement, uh, I'm sorry, page 53. Uh, the provision says if more than one residential dwelling unit principal governmental, commercial, or industrial structure or use, or combination thereof, is constructed or established on a single parcel, all the dimensional requirements shall be met for each additional dwelling unit, principal structure, or use. Right there in the bulk space requirements, we've got two, the, the, the ordinance specifically contemplates two principal uses or structures. Section three uh, is about campsites. I'm looking at page um, 57. I mean, obviously, we're, we're not proposing a campsite here, but it does say individual campsite proposed on a lot that contains another principal use. So the ordinance allows for campsites along with another principal use. I actually think I passed one of those on my way here, too. And if you're unconvinced that the ordinance alone already contemplates two principal uses on a lot, um, the MMA, somebody mentioned the MMA, MMA manuals, MMA guidance provides that any ambiguities in the ordinance, and I don't think the ordinance is ambiguous. First of all, it doesn't prohibit two principal uses. It doesn't say anywhere in there, believe me, I read it from front to back many, many times. It doesn't prohibit it. It specifically contemplates it in several section, sections of the ordinance. And the MMA guidance says that any ambiguities, to the extent you think the ordinance is ambiguous, are construed in favor of the landowner. In which case, the ordinance, if you considered it ambiguous in the first place, should be construed in favor of the applicant, Mr. Moreau. Um, what else did I have to tell you? Yeah. Recite in the garage that's shown on the plan there. If you have any questions at all 
about the size, the dimensions, the construction timeline. There is no exterior lighting. That came up in one of the correspondence from Attorney Silk. There's no exterior lighting. There's not proposed to be any exterior lighting. There is 100 feet of buffer between the right of way and the abutting parcel. Um, there's, I mean, it's full of trees. You guys want to plan a site walk? Go over there and take a look. We've measured the right of way. It's 50 feet legally. It's 15 feet in gravel. It's two inches thick. You can ask the surveyor about it. Ask any questions that you want. Go through the ordinance step by step. What do you need to know? We are prepared to tell you all about that today. That's it for now. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope you would use that as a citizen of this beach if I sit in the audience. Not public comment, Your public comment? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> this sketch plan is grossly incomplete. It's supposed to show all the budding properties. They refuse to show any of the properties east of the garage. Okay. Clearly, the attorney is asking for us to waive that. That's a very slippery slope, mm -hmm. particularly with an industrial operation here that hasn't been compliant for a number of years. All the sketch, this sketch plan from the beginning should have showed all the budding properties. Why is it that they don't want to show this area over here? It used to be in resource conservation, and it's the stream head. Uh, it's a major stream head and uh, was in resource uh, conservation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's in resource conservation anymore, but this is a very wet property, and our ordinance clearly states they're supposed to show any water okay. in, the, in the area, any, and I find it interesting that the attorney is saying they want the board to waive these requirements so that we can see what's to the east of this property. Okay. So I basically wanted to just comment on that and also the fact that if the attorney got involved in this, um, I wish the whole board had been uh, notified. Um, that's procedure. But, um, you know, this has been problematic for a long time because if you look, there's a number of performance guarantees that are missing here besides the fact that the sketch plan isn't, isn't even complete. Okay. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. But when the attorney made that information available, um, it was done from a confidential point of view. Right. No, I understand that. I, I know that. I understand that, Mr. Hester. It wasn't something you would know, David. No, I did not institute it. No, well, why, that's why I have issues with the micromanagement in school. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just uh, to address the comments just brought up by uh, by this gentleman, we did provide we did provide to the town. It's in the original application a tax map with all of the abutters on it. There's also an abutters list, so we're not trying to hide uh, who his neighbors are. Okay. Uh, everybody knows everybody around here to begin with, and okay. you guys have this in your yes. pocket. Yes. Yes. Sorry, give me just 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 one second. Our our secretary has got her hands on lots. The abutters notices went out on April first. Okay. For, for the new, so when we got the application and when we... I don't have any budget list, though. You have. Mm -hmm. I don't. Oh, okay. It was yeah. included so in the first submission. It, okay. In, the I think it was okay. March, we decided to um, withdraw the application and represent it in April so that the abutters notices could go out. The abutters notices were mailed on April 1st for the April 21st meeting. Okay. So they should have so known about it. They should have been here to your question. Right. Okay. Will you, can you make us copies of that butter list again and give it to the send it to each board member, please? Yep. Right. So they know that they've got it. Just two more quick points, if you would. I can see you're already exhausted by this, but but we have had little opportunity to speak during this whole process, so I appreciate your patience with us right now. This process has frankly been a little bit hijacked by the abutter. Um, this isn't an industrial. This isn't an industrial project. And number two, um, your own attorney wrote in the correspondence to you that any past bad behavior does not impact the board's decision today. You're looking at the application as to comply with the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And that's board. Any questions, comments? Andy. Quick comment. Oh. I believe there are 14 above. Okay. Of those 14, um, two originally opposed, right? One spoke for it. Numerous others have never shown up. Okay. So I would I would say the board should consider that in terms of 
the preponderance of the local sentiment. But I think it goes to the Okay? Do you want to have a comment at this time? I did. Yep. Are you a resident of uh, Parsonsfield? I sure am. Would you please come to the mic, sir? Okay. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's Michael Nelligan. I'm the abutter. Okay, sir. Hi. Um, David Silk wasn't able to make it. Did you pull your mask down while you're up here? Oh, okay. You can understand me, please. Uh, David Silk wasn't able to make it this evening, but yes. he wanted to make sure that you reviewed the document that he sent. Yes. And I know we've jumped ahead to the conditions, but this board hasn't reviewed this application for completeness. Plain and simple. The board has not reviewed this for completeness. That's all. And... Uh, <clears throat> There are two other abutters that oppose this, and even if it was one of one person opposing this, that shouldn't take into effect anything that this board decides. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Code enforcement officer, do you have any comments about uh, two things? Cease or desist order? And any violation that's under is open at this time. There's none open. There's no violations open at this no, time. I did not serve a cease and assist order. And that's not easy. No. That all that I, I gave them a stop work order originally for the first planning board meeting. Okay. And that stop work order was in effect until he had planning board approval okay. to operate the business that he's been operating. He got that approval from the planning board and he he remedied all the issues that were down there he followed all the plans that the, the existing planning board then put upon him okay conditions of approval okay in which he followed okay so it is in my best interest the town's best interest i've spoken to the selectmen about it on waiting to see what's going what the planning board is going to do on their decision whether i serve another stock work order or not Okay. Did you have your hand up, Mr. Devin? Uh, I just wanted to quickly... Please, sir, would you mind? <laughs> yeah. So we get it recorded, please. Okay. I just want to quickly say that we, we sent an FOA to the town clerk and <clears throat> requested specifically any permits, mm -hmm. none. So, Mr. Mer unfortunately, I think Mr. Moreau has been operating there without a certificate of occupancy. That's a permit that's required. Maybe he has one. That wasn't given to us. The other thing is we were specifically asked for compliance, meaning letters from the CEO to Mr. Moreau or his attorney. No letters of compliance. And there is something else, but I, I can't recall right now. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Winters. Yeah. When he got his uh, approval from the planning board, that I was sitting here when he got the approval. Okay, sir. I, I didn't need to issue any compliance letter for him. Okay. Okay. The occupancy permit was already done in 2016 when he built the garage. Okay. It's always been a garage. It's always. And it's still valid. Still valid. Okay. <laughs> That was all David Bauer was the code enforcement officer that issued the permit and, and did all the inspections on okay. the garage. Yes, sir. I didn't realize this was going to be a public hearing, but um, we're not. Sorry. I'm just trying to give us some okay. information. Uh, information. Yes. Um, so we can make a good decision. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Moreau's 2015, 2015 application for the garage was for a two-car garage for storage so uh, he then built something different and started an auto repair shop and, and the rest is history we, I'm not gonna go there uh, mr. Moreau has now changed the use or proposing to change the use from a garage for storage to a commercial auto repair garage and in the ordinance it says, if you're changing use, you need a certificate of occupancy. 
I'll find the, the ordinance for you. I'm happy to do that, but just to rectify that. Thank, Thank you. you. I think we get it enough information. Board, do you need any more information before we make a motion to do anything at this time? Either yes or no? Oh. Yes, Andy. We've got an awful lot of information from all sides, including the town of Lloyd. It's not clear to me how the town of Lloyd got involved. I know he's mentioned that he's thought that to be directed. Uh, I'm a little troubled by the fact that um, they were telling us what to do. They said they moved as if they had no discretion in their own. Right. Um, however, the town, some of the town level information is of value. Yes. And it suggests that um, the board should not be involved in any way with the town of Lloyd. Yes. 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 We can say, even though we're well too close to the state, we can mark the application complete and then deny it. Um, and then Mr. Moreau would have to do another application once he's completed all the conditions that are required here. Um, so I would ask the Sheriff's Department, what do you think is the correct procedure to do? Is that crazy? Um, I, I agree with Mr. Nelligan. I would say review the application for completeness, go down line by line through the ordinance and see if it meets all the criteria. As far as what's been submitted, not if they sort of need it, um, all the information that I read is a complete package. It may not fall in complete compliance with the ordinance, though, and I will say that as a board chair, the acting board chair. So right away, when you read the, the document, when you read the code in here, and I'll point this out, I know he's established the right of way, but let me find it again, how the right of way was established. Uh, no, I have to find something. Well, I was looking at it earlier today, but I have most of this underlined. It's not that I find it now, and I really want to read it. Anyway, what it says about the right of way, I hate to say, the town lawyer is correct. Let me find it, and I'll point it out to you. Page six. Page six. Right, page 10. Page 10. I knew I was. <laughs> Are you looking at the rear lots and right away? Yeah, right away. That's page 10. Rear lots. Page 10, article 1, D. Three, rear lots that are still being addressed this is a rear lot and there's a reason why. A rear lot which lacks frontage that meets size requirement but is accessible only by a right of way that does not meet the width requirements and it didn't through the whole process until recently may be used for a single dwelling or other single permitted use provided that the right of way existed at the effective date of this ordinance or amendment and that a wider right of way cannot be negotiated with the budding landowners and that all other relevant provisions of this ordinance can be met. So when you got the right of way established, Mr. Monroe, from to give us the 50 foot through there to bring it all the way to the back, what the lawyer is, what we've been advised by this letter is, it's, it just doesn't make any difference. You still can't use that for dual use. But what I'm saying, what I think as a board chair, you didn't negotiate with any land of others at all, did you? Did you? Did you negotiate with any butters to set us that new right away? I didn't think I had to. I owned the property right away. There you go. You give me the right answer. You, the, the, the right away on the side that you have the butters on, you did not change that. Is that correct? Exactly. You only changed the right away width on the side where you own the land. Right. So you did not negotiate with any of others. Mm -hmm. See what see what it says here and what he did and did not do. 
He did negotiate that. He did it on his own, with his own land. So the lawyer is somewhat correct, but he's also incorrect. Yes, ma'am. He is the applicant. I do have an opportunity to respond to what you just said. And I, do you disagree with that? Okay. The, the rear lot definition says, a right of way that doesn't meet the width requirements. What are the width requirements for the right of way? Tell It's 50 feet. How wide is the right of way? Now? Yeah. Now it's 50 feet. You're looking at the application now, right? Yeah, and the right of way is 50 feet. Is that but what right? it says, I'll read what it says here. He doesn't need to negotiate with the abutters. The right of way is now meets the minimum That's requirements. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm saying. Because, I, I'm trying to say what the legal told us is not correct in detail okay. because he did not negotiate with anybody. He didn't need to. Yeah, oh, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to hear this gentleman back here. Uh, are you a citizen of Parsonsville, sir? I am. Thank you, sir. My name's uh, Justin Espinosa. Sure. My name's Justin Espinosa, 335 Mudgett Road. Um, I just wanted to comment, not on the merits of this application, whether it's right or wrong. Just, uh, I, I don't want to call it a tip because that sounds demeaning, but um, in my experience uh, being on the planning board, uh, to move things along expeditiously, mm -hmm. uh, what we would do was go through the application uh, and then have each board member either agree that it meets the stipulations or not. Uh, line by line item because I, I think that and this is my first time hearing this one but um, it it seems like things are getting kind of uh, picked apart and scattered rather than uh, going sequ sequentially and if you're able to, to go through the board and say board members yes or no do you believe this this meets this condition for completeness um, and you get yeses across the board that that is null and void you don't have to deal with it it's crossed off the checklist and then you get to one where everybody disagrees you guys can have a discussion and if it's no for that that portion that's fine mm -hmm. at least it sparks a conversation and then at the end of the checklist you can pull the board members and say do you believe this uh, is a complete application yes or no and I'm not trying to tell you to do your job I just I noticed that throughout this meeting you know you're talking about this here this here this here when the, the intent is to get to whether this is a complete application or not but it is complete application by what the vote requires. I understand that but you have to vote on that as a board yes and, and in order to do that if you go step by step and, and have everybody just say yes or no then you've either got it or not if somebody says no then it's part of the conversation i'm not trying to tell you to do your job i'm just sharing like if, to, to get things going down the right path for you okay. and, and that's just my humble opinion absolutely thank you so uh, much. yeah it. so thank you yes there are you mentioned about the bottles yes and the irony is they want a waiver so that we don't know where the butters are over here okay. I'll hear you. So the town attorney is going based on all the butters. Right. That's why the sketch plan says right. you must include all the budding properties. And they're asking for a waiver so they don't have to. Why? Right. Wouldn't that be problematic to this board? Do you want to give a waiver to something that is standard policy? Right. And as uh, under um, Supreme Court law, state law, we can't give out waivers like candy. No. Especially for standards. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. I, uh, anybody else on the board, does the board members have any other questions? Any concerns? Do you, does anybody in here feel like this package is not going to be completed as far as what had to be submitted? Does the board feel like this is not going to be completed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We're talking about a particular zone. Yeah. And we're going to be dealing with zones all the time. We have to make really clear that the zones that this takes place in is totally acceptable. Right. And that's my concern. I, I have concerns because it's, I mean, no, it's visual, uh, village rural, but it's also been known to be village historic there. Okay. So, we, we don't want to make new precedent by bringing in commercial. Right. So I want the board to keep that in mind and make it yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I just want to mention what Justin was saying about going through line by line. Justin? Okay. JP. JP. Yeah. JP. Hey, uh, great work on the ball. Yeah. 
Um, page 97 is the site plan review application, and that's where you, you would go for line by line. Thank you. Yep. It's also on the front of the application. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The right. But we've accepted the application as complete but already. It's already been accepted as being complete submittal package, the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. right, so that don't mean it's, it's right. It don't mean it's right. It's a complete package. I so. and you get to know it has to be from the board. It does? Yes. Oh. Okay. No, you, you made a motion to table the action on this product project until the next board meeting when the identified items have been addressed. So you have not made any motion or vote on the completeness of this application. Okay, so we got to make a motion to do that, right? Andy, Mr. Espinosa, the former chair here, the government spoke, pointed out, we're going to go through all this time to find whether it's complete or not, and then go to you know, because we know that on its current merits, we can't approve it. I understand that. So I'm questioning if it's necessary to do so. I understand what you're saying. Does anybody have a motion at this time from the board, the claim board? Yes. A motion that we vote. Wait a minute. Do we have a form without you, Mr. Perlison? Can you make a motion? I don't know. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing in a minute that I'm part of this. The way our uh, laws work is because he's been involved in so many meetings, even though he was an alternate, he takes precedent over other board members that might have because he was here at other meetings. <laughs> well, I disagree with how that's written. I, had, I knew that, and I found this over here. As long as we have a quorum, right. no alternate comes in the voting position. Well, here's the problem, Mr. Chairman. If that person was in on the meetings, just how Andy had to sign, because he wasn't in on that meeting. That's why someone who participated on the meeting as an alternate is supposed to stay in, okay. because they have the experience from participating in the past. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're right. oh, okay. So because Gerard Clifford recused himself, you designated alternate Saban and Cliff as voting members. And I reminded you at the time that they would stay voting members until the completion of the project. And I'll read this different, but that's all right. Thank you, that's right. I'm sorry. So Saban is now a full member. Cliff is still an alternate, but that's. Can we, can we put him back as an alternate? I, I wouldn't. I would. I mean, that's good. Oh, so yeah. Th this is the only project that he can vote okay, on tonight, right. yes. This is well, I just want to make a motion. <laughs> I want, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, throw out the plan as it is <coughs> and uh, have Mr. Uh, Moreau come back with something that uh, meets some of the standards of knowing all the bodies and everything. The whole nine yards. Not throw out, but disapprove. Yeah, right. I, I want to, to disapprove of this direction. Oh, completely. Did you get that? Uh, I'm sorry, no. Say that again. I want, I, want, I want to make a motion to disapprove this current application as it is not complete. Uh, we don't have to relitigate what we know Mr. Moreau has done over the years, but the very least we can do is throw this application out until we see something that's correct. <laughs> yes, sir. I don't think you can throw it out as incomplete until we determine it's incomplete. And we confirm it within the English Act, that's what I just said we shouldn't do. No, as everyone's, Mr. Espinosa and Mr. Uh, Yale were pointing out very important things to Vice Chair. You know, we have to go by the checklist. Is? We have a checklist in the back, um, and we have to go through that checklist. What page is that on? 97. It starts on 97. And it is also on the front of the application. That's what I thought. It's on the application, too. Site plan review application starts a general submission. Yep. Okay. We're here for that. See, I don't have that application in front of me. Do you have a copy of it? 
I gotta have a bath. information from the ZBA when they denied his application so we could review it. I so again, if you remember, this is in the minutes. We had made a request. Um, I think this might have been back before you were on the board, and it was me, mm -hmm. Mr. Beckworth, and Andy. Um, uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Thank you, sir. Gentleman Simon. is recused, right? Huh? This gentleman is recused. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. He's speaking from a citizen's point of view. Right. I made it clear from the beginning I wanted to step aside to defend the murder. So he's only speaking from the citizen. Slide plan and content. The application must include the following exhibits and information. All right? Original fully executed and signed application for site plan review this document plus nine copies. I think we've received that. Yes. Ten copies of site plan drawn is scaled to allow review of list of approved criteria and showing the following when applicable. General submission information, name and address of all property owners within 500 feet of edge of property. We may not have that. Okay. Yeah, we have it. You have it? It's in the application. I'm just asking you, you have it. I didn't look through it. Uh, you, you have my copy. It's in it's there. <laughs> all right. That's the one you pointed out before. Yes. The, so the... They made the list. I gave you a copy of my list of labels that I mailed out. Because I do remember seeing this now. I did not bring it with you tonight. Would you like to use mine as chairman? No, I've heard this complete. I just got to find the application, the, the page with all the letters. Yeah, it's going to be right after, it's going to be the third page, right after the submission. I'll see it. My voters list. Yes. So all those would have to be on the drawings. A sketch map showing general location of site within the town. That does. Boundaries of all con contiguous property under control of owner, applicant, regardless of whether it, uh, all the parties being developed at this time. We do have that. Copy of the deed to the property. Hmm. Option to purchase the property or other documentation to demonstrate right title of interest. Do we have, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it, why I look it, you. What, what I would suggest is, as you're reading down the list, have another board member looking through the application to confirm that it's in okay. there. Okay. Here's the warranty deeds. Okay, you guys look through it for me, please. If we're looking for all this, Andy, and uh, save it. Name, registration number, and seal, land surveyor, architect, engineer, or similar professional who prepared any plan. Yep. We have his name. Yep. We have a plan, it's not a seal, it's not signed. It has to be sealed. Yes. Yeah, I know we can make it official. Yes. But they're in the process, so it's official, can we uh, make a decision on it, I guess. Bearings and distance of all property lines of, of property to be developed and source of information. So the only property developing is what this application is, yeah. it's not for the whole parcel. Uh, I, I disagree with that. What are you saying there, Mr. Nogan? The bearings and distances of all property lines of the property to be developed. He's developing 26 Reed Lane. No, the property itself. Yes, 12 acres. Okay. Bearing and distance of all property lines of property to be developed. And that's what Jill had mentioned first, that yes, it's going to be. She has no, no, I don't think we're going to give you a waiver on that. I suggest you might want to vote on yeah. that. Location and size of any existing sewer, water mains, culverts, and drains. That's not on this latest one. Culverts and drainage, it's not on there. You've got uh, several versions of that? Is I know. Okay, so if you do have that information. I know we do, but it says with that reading. I disagree. Okay. Okay. It should be on the latest, always on the latest drawing. The culverts are showing on here. There's one right before you get into it. Yeah, I saw the culvert of the uh, drainage and also how the water drains with the arrows you put on one drawing. There is a plan in your file that has the water drains going there. It will look a little busy with all the information. That's, That's the I'm using that. 
Location name and present width of existing streets and right away within adjacent to the proposed development, we do now have. Location dimensions of ground floor elevations above ground level of all existing and proposed buildings on the site. I don't think we have that or not. Yeah. So um, we have elevations on all the buildings and then it's the AGL is above ground level. Yeah. I've got that on there one foot. Where's that? In the house. For the shed, it's right down below one foot AGL. For the house, it's 0.8 AGL. And his existing garage was flush with the ground. Unless you want to drive into the bay, and not have to jump up over stuff. Location dimensions of existing driveway, streets, parking, and loading areas, and walkways on the site. On the site. Okay. Location of intersecting roads and driveways within 200 feet of the site. The only one we had was a mountain road, and that's 225 feet from the center of Green Lane. Okay, features with description of features to be retained and, and of any new landscaping. Location, front view, and dimensions of existing and proposed signs. That's on the original application. You skipped number seven. I'm sorry. Seven. Location of open greens, courses, wetlands, stand of trees, and other important natural features with description of features being retained and of any new landscaping. And the site plan clearly doesn't show what I see. has to show if there's water. Right. And there's water there. So it's, it's, we've got water there. We uh, don't have all this, the uh, landscaping. I believe the prior plan and prior application did show the wetlands. This is a new application. Mm -hmm. Location dimensions of proposed, proposed driveways, parking, loading areas, and walkways. That's just driveways only because it's no, no park. Well, there is a parking on there too. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have parking. Mm -hmm. Direction to route of proposed surface waters. That's what I want to see on there. Drainage. Those little arrows. Yeah, yeah you've got that. On the driveway. Not on this yep. We'll put it on that. Location, front view, and dimensions of proposed art. Type and the location type of exterior lighting, you say there's no light. No exterior lighting, that's correct. That's what I said. No that, exterior lighting. That is correct. Proposed landscaping and buffering. There's lots of natural woods. There are no new proposed landscaping. Uh, they're shown on the plan. The wood, wooded areas are shown on the plan. The mention of any applicable state uh, applications or permits which have been or may be issued. Jesse, is there any that has to be done? Let's just say it again. Demonstration of any applicable state applications or permits which may have been or may be in, may be issued. No. Do you have to issue any, or you think there has to be any issue? No. Nope. Okay. And you already have a Department of Transportation uh, permit in your package. And the state driveway entrance permit has been taken care of. Okay. Well, there's the DEP and the siting of the oil containment, which Attorney Kramer said that she would provide to you that they had. Actually, that goes through the fire marshal and then to the DEP. So you don't have that permit. Which, based on an approval, he'd probably have to go to DEP and get a PBR. So we're saying then because of that, if we... If we this this application is not complete, then. if he has to, if upon completeness of this application, he can go to the DEP and get a PBR, a permit by rule for okay. his oil containment. Okay. These are things I'm not going to spend money on unless I can do something. Sure, it I'm makes right. a little sense. Yeah. Schedule construction, including anticipated beginning and completion dates. I don't think we have that. We've got proposed construction dates in my letter dated May 6th, I believe. That we've never got. Yeah, three, uh, no, he, they did get it. It was a three-month three window for construction of a new garage, and okay. that's where we go with this. Play, uh, spaces shall be provided on the plan, uh, signature of the plan board and dates together, file the words approved, down the Parsons Field Planning Board. That's on there. Mm -hmm. But really, we don't have, what do we not have, board? Does anybody look? Definitely. The yes. Current, the current application doesn't show the wetland. I didn't hear you. The, the current application doesn't show the existence of the wetland. Okay, so the old one's fine, but not the current. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else from the planning board?
the old applications in the files? Are the old applications in the files? I I only have the new stuff. The, the old stuff is probably. But you got it in the office. Of I yeah. might suggest to you that this isn't supposed to be like a gotcha moment. Like, yeah. if you need the information, we're happy to provide that to you. But you do have, you do possess it. We're not trying to do a gotcha moment. All right. We're just trying to get this figured out. I yep. understand that. Uh, Plain board. Any other questions? Any motions at this time? No motions from the planning board at all. Location and mentioned today existing easements. Easements? And 10 copies of existing covenants. Yeah, we do. We have them. We have them. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I'm going to make sure it's all applications and what's happening. So I don't feel like this application is complete. You need to read out all the stuff that you say you've submitted multiple times. And get one clear application right. showing what your intentions are. Right, I agree. No. Write us a list of what you need, you shall have. Just that list is on the front of your application. Yes, yeah, so the wetlands, you need information about the wetlands and the water courses. That was submitted with this current application. Discussion. The wetlands picture was uh, demonstrated in one of the packets. Yes. 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 Um, I agree the application is not complete. My concern here is this applicant has been through this process multiple times has come to great expense to try to comply with the town's right um, and with the voters' objections as well. Right. Um, he seems to be willing to further comply with them as shown by his plan. Right. Um, I'm not quite sure how the board should proceed right. I know. Um, it's it's to, a to vote the application. It's really tough. Um, with another application. Yeah, it's really tough. Yes, sir? Sorry, I'm a little bit slow, guys. I've been working on long, long days. Um, so Justin Espinosa, my, my yes, road. Again, not on the merits of the application, but not on the merits of the application, but if a uh, procedural matter, if, if you guys do vote the application incomplete today, the applicant is entitled to a letter from the planning board chair detailing right. out each thing that it's missing and needs to be addressed, not just pointed to the checklist that they all should be on there. Right. It needs to be very clear to the applicant. Uh, and then that the applicant then in turn has the, the time and responsibility to provide those documents so it can be voted either complete or non-complete. That's an ongoing process. And then the denial, which after it has been complete or not complete, is a separate decision than that. So just another procedural thing, just so everybody's on the same page. It, it can't just be like, well, you, you should know what you need to do. No, the board's responsibility and onus to an applicant is to tell them if they're missing something. No, I, you just, you recommended, hey, look on the application. So I just wanted to be clear. Like, he, it, it's not his responsibility. Right. No. So what I think we want to do, and Jesse, yes, sir. I have the FEMA floodplain and wetlands map in my office, if you guys want to look at it. No, I want that on the drawings up there with them. Okay. I, but I like your point of view. I might go look at it tomorrow. Okay. Yes, your site plan view is, and this is the most important thing. Yes. And if you don't have the abutting properties, they can say, oh, it's in the, it's in this, it's in that. Right. It's not before us. Right. Honestly. And we have no idea what we're dealing with to the east here. They have a little line. Right. And all our active, that's why they want to waive it. They want to waive so that they don't have to show us what's over here. No, I just wow. don't want to pay a survey of ten thousand dollars for something needless. For just a few for the year of butter, that's a requirement in the ordinance. That's why they want to leave it. I bet nobody else has ever had to go through it around here. Yeah. Yeah. Every uh, applicant has to. Yes, Mr. Not, not okay. Okay. Well, I think I pronounced it right. Yeah. I didn't. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I just want to address uh, uh, Mr. Yale. Um, about Mr. Moreau complying with, and moving forward with this, that on January 12th, you were present, Attorney Kramer was present, Mr. Moreau was present. His uh, permit was revoked, reversed, nullified. And what Mr. Moreau, under his own admission, last meeting, said, I'm working. And he continued to work. We continued to file complaints with the CEO and select board. So to say that Mr. Moreau 